take number one million. Hey guys, welcome back to Match You Gans. Today we're going to be going through part two of our series where we are implementing style GAN. Uh, today we're going to be going through inconsequential noise and constant input. What we're also doing today, as you saw at the beginning of the video, is generating pictures of landscapes. Now I've collected a couple thousand images of landscapes from the Earth Porn subreddit so that we are able to do this today. So to start, let me explain what we're doing today. So we are going to be adding inconsequential noise, as it's called, and changing our input from the latent vector to a constant input. I'll explain to you why. So last week we went through adaptive instance normalization, and adaptive instance normalization applied the latent vector to each layer in our generator. Now what this means is that our latent vector doesn't need to come from the beginning of the model anymore. So what we can do is we can change it so that the latent vector no longer starts as an image representation, but the image representation starts as a constant, which then gets changed by the latent vector as the image is generating. The problem with this, though, is that as we're normalizing, we're normalizing entire channels, but this doesn't add too much texture. So images can come out looking a little bit painterly, as the original paper calls it. What this means is that certain things will not have any texture at all. Things you might expect to have texture, like grass or something like that, is not going to have any texture at all. And the reason for this is because we aren't doing those individual values anymore, and it's not coming as random noise in the input, as that is now constant. So what we have is called inconsequential noise. And we use this noise and we simply add it to each layer as we're generating the image. This allows for different scales of features to have new amounts of texture. So now, uh, let's talk about this inconsequential noise. This inconsequential noise starts off as being the same size as our end goal, our end image, 128 by 128. We then crop it down and simply scale it based on each channel. So now each channel has its own noise, and then we add that noise to each feature. So here we can see from here that we have uh, a noise input that's up on our top left. It goes down and it gets added with as inconsequential noise at each layer before we completely generate the image. We also use our latent vector in each, uh, in each layer, as we did last week. So what this does is it allows textures to be added at different scales and at different places in the generation process so that things that need textures can have textures. And then those that don't need any random noise or textures or anything like that can just be completely scaled down to zero or something like that. Things like a smooth sky or smooth water that don't need that texture can easily be scaled down and don't need that texture anyways. So now let's talk about how we're going to implement this inconsequential noise and the constant input rather than what we had last week. So today, like I said, we're going to be going through images of landscapes. Uh, instead of 64 by 64 images, today we're going to be going through 128 by 128 sized images. So we have a batch size of 32 and we're going through 100,000 iterations. Uh, like usual, we have our imports here, whatever, our imports up here as well, whatever, we don't really need to care about them yet. We have our gradient penalty and adaptive instance normalization. We've gone through videos on this, we know exactly what these are now. So let's talk about this function. It's called crop to fit. So when we are actually adding this noise, it needs to be the same size as our image representation is. So here in this function, we actually have two inputs. The first one is our one channel noise, which is the size that it comes in as, which is the size of our image with only one channel, 128 by 128 by one. And we also use our image representation. We want to scale this down. We want to crop down the noise so that it has the same width and the same height as our image representation. So here we say crop any piece of x0. It doesn't matter where we crop on it as long as it has the same height and width as the image representation does. So here we grab the height, which is going to be the second axis of the uh, image representation and the width, which is the other axis of the image representation. And then finally, we return our inconsequential noise input with the proper height and width. The reason we multiply this by two is because we're going to be using this function before the upsampling layer that is being applied to our image representation. 
So we need this to be twice as big as whatever the current image representation is. We can change this along the way if you'd like, if you find it simpler to do it the other way, but I like the way that this one looks when we actually get down to doing our generator block. Speaking of the generator block, here's where we are. So first we get our scale and bias parameters for adaptive instance normalization. This is quite usual, we did this last week. And then we want to grab our noise. So our noise is going to be 128 by 128 at this point. So we'll want to crop it to fit. And so you're using your inconsequential noise as your first input and then the input tensor. So that's going to be our image representation. Next, we will want to use a dense layer. So what this layer does is that it takes each, uh, it, it takes and adds more channels to the, the noise. That way, when we add the noise to these channels, then they can each have their own uh, amounts of noise that they're going to be doing. So the weights in this are going to be the scaling factors of this inconsequential noise. So for a feature like water, we might have very small, but on a feature like grass or sand or something like that, we might have more of a scale. Maybe it's scale 10, 20. It does, it, it's up to the model and how it trains and the way it goes. So now we have our upsampling, convolution, usual stuff. And now we add the noise to the output of the convolutional uh, layer. So we simply add it, there's no subtraction, no multiplication, there's nothing fancy being done about this uh, output here, about this addition here. It is simple addition. This way we just add to these features or subtract to these features. So we can have say more or less grass, more or less, etc. And the amounts of scaling is going to affect exactly what's going on with that. And now we use our adaptive instance normalization and uh, activation, and that's our generator block. So now we can move on to what's going on with our generator now. So our generator now has two inputs, both a latent input and our noise input here. So this noise input is going to be the same size as our image, except it's only going to have one channel. So this one channel can then be scaled for each, each block in the generator. And as we saw earlier, map the latent input. So now what we'll want to do is we'll want to remove the traditional input that we had before. So the latent vector that we were using, making into a small image representation, and then you know growing that into a full image, we're now just going to want to use a constant image representation to start. So how we'll do this is we're going to add a dense layer with just one value, and that's going to be from our uh, latent input. So this means that we just have a vector of size one. Now we'll want to multiply that vector by zero and add one so that no matter what that value was before, that value is now going to be one. So it's going to be constant. And now as we reshape to the four by four by 64 image representation that we had before, um, we now have a dense layer, which is what these constant inputs are going to be. So these ones are learned. These are learned values. The image representation is a learned image representation to start. So if we have something constant that is unmoving, such as a face that's just con continuously going to be right side up and, and exactly in the same part of the shot, then we are going to be able to have these kind of constants be there to say no matter what, there's going to be eyes here, a mouth here, etc, etc. So now we, uh, we have it, we reshape, and we use multiple G blocks again to upsample until we finally have a final image. So again, uh, in our G block, we have an extra input, not just our latent, our mapped latent input, but we also have a noise input now, which is just going to be the original noise that we got as input. Finally, we use an image output, and that's going to be the output of our generator. And so this is still quite similar to before. When we're compiling our model, we'll just want to add that noise input. The discriminator also exactly is normal. So now we have to make our compiled models. There's not too much difference with here except that now we're going to also use a noise input for our training models. So our generator takes in two inputs now, so we'll wanna make sure to feed both of those inputs to our generator, and then we'll just wanna add that to our actual model building and our model compilation. Same thing with building our generator training configuration. So here we're also going to use the noise input and then add that when we compile our model and that sort of thing. Finally now, we're here to our training loop. So now we'll wanna use a new input of our noise. The type of noise that you add here doesn't actually matter too much. Some people prefer to do normally distributed noise. I prefer to do uniformly distributed noise here between negative one and one. 
and then you'll just want to have it be the same size as your image if your image only had one channel. So it's 128 by 128 by 1, of course, by our batch size. And then finally, we are here now where we can train our models. We'll just want to make sure to add those extra inputs, and that's it. Now we can train our models just as we have before. So I've already gone ahead and I've trained all these models and for the 100,000 iterations it took a lot longer than our previous models simply because we doubled the size of our images and we also doubled the number of iterations that we're doing. So now we can see some example outputs from what we've generated using this new model. As you can see they look pretty nice, you can definitely tell that they are landscapes and that sort of thing and there's a lot of variety and a lot of different texturing and sharp edges especially is the one thing I've noticed right off the bat is that you can definitely see where the horizon line is especially in this image and in some other images as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Matthew Gans. I make these weekly so feel free to subscribe. You're going to see another one next week and the week after and the week after that etc. And so I hope you guys can join me back for that one and I hope you enjoy the video and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching.